So this is the hardware that I have set up to program this EEPROM, a 28C16. First of all, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. Uh, pins are coming in here on the breadboard. I'm drawing the 5 volts from the Raspberry Pi, but I am using some 3.3 volt power as well. The uh, chips don't seem to mind a high voltage level of 3.3 volts. So we have the data and clock coming into the shift registers. We also have a latch pin or a storage register clock pulse here. This is tied low through this 10K resistor. So out of the shift registers, you can see all the blue wires here going to address the EEPROM. So we can set whatever address we want to read or write to. I also have 3.3 volts coming over to the breadboard here. These resistors tie the output enable and write enable pins high. After uh, reading a, a section of data from the EEPROM, it would actually write uh, zero to the EEPROM when I released the, the general purpose I.O., the GPIO pins uh, at the end of the program it would wind up writing a zero to the last um, addressed byte. So I tied these two pins high to avoid that. I also had to use a logic level converter, this being the low voltage side three, at 3.3 3 volts, this being the higher voltage side at 5 volts, uh, just because on these other pins we're just outputting 3.3 3 volts to the shift registers or here we're just tying the output and the write enable pins high at 3.3 .3 volts and we're drawing them low when we want to write or output. But here, where we either want to read data or write data to the EEPROM, we needed to separate the 3.3 .3 volts from the 5 volts. So I'm using this to do that. Okay, so we're looking at the software for the EEPROM programmer. Uh, right off the bat, we're using uh, Python 3.4.2. Uh, most of the code is in enclosed in a try finally block. We, if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that uh, the cleanup procedure for the GPIO pins. Going back up to the top, we import some modules, uh, the OS, CSV. Uh, that way we can have data uh, saved in uh, comma separated values, which we can load back in to write to the EEPROM. Uh, we have our GPIO and sleep from the, from the time module. Uh, initialize a couple of uh, constants here, MSB first, LSB first, those are for the shifting out data to the shift registers, most significant bit first, least significant bit first, uh, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, program in a loop, so program run is true, um, when we decide to quit we'll set that to false and the program will drop out. Um, and we have a couple of global lists image contents and EEPROM contents. We're setting the uh, board mode so we're going to use the physical pin numbering I just find it easier and we set some some pins up here with some labels that uh, make some sense. Uh, also creating a list of, of data pins that could be inputs or outputs but these are the uh, pin numbers that we're, that we're using from the Raspberry Pi, all in a list. And then that allows us to set them all up with just a line. We reference the list as data pins, set them up as inputs, and not that it was necessary, but I even pulled them all up with the uh, internal pull-ups. 
uh, shift out function. Um, I wrote this shift out function. Uh, default would be 8 bits shifted at a time, but you can set this up. I'm using uh, 16 bits, even though um, we're really only using 11 to address the EE prom. Uh, and, and here we set up the clock and data pin initially low as outputs. And here's our our modes. Uh, um, actually, I'm using LSB first um, to to shift the data out. Here we can set uh, set an address. You know, many of the the other steps you'll want to set an address first and then do something at, at that point. So here, just a function to set an address. You shift it out using the other shift out function and then just toggle the latch pen to actually put it out of the shift registers. Um, here's our function to read the EEPROM. So here we've got a global, we're referencing the global EEPROM contents list. We clear it out to an empty list and then we uh, set up those data pins because we're going to read so we're setting them up as inputs print out some information that it might take a while to read the EE prompt. And then we set our output pin because we want the uh, data to be available to read. Um, and then we, we go through the all the address ranges, zero up to but not including 2048. We set the address. Um, we start by initializing a byte value of zero and then we as we go through the pins in our pin you know our data pins list um, we calculate that byte value that that we're trying to read and then we append the byte value onto our eeprom contents list um, this here would have been probably easier to format with a newer version of python but this is what I came up with. Um, this code here is commented out. It was just while well, testing to read from an individual address. Um, here's uh, an erase. You want to erase the entire EEPROM. Um, basically, erasing is just writing, you know, all ones in every single bit. Data pins will all be high because you're trying to write every bit as a one. Go through each address, toggle the right so it actually puts it on the EEPROM, and then uh, kind of clean up from that. And then here, if we want to write to the EEPROM, set our output pin that needs to be high. We set an address. We set up our data pins as outputs because we're going to write a value to the EEPROM. We go through our data pins to, to get the value that we need for, for each pin. And then we go ahead and, there again, to toggle the right pin to actually write the data to the EEPROM. We just kind of clean up and that's the end of that function. And here we're going to load an image from a, from a file. So here we're referencing the global image contents. We clear out the image contents list. Um, we check for uh, the file name if it exists and then we go uh, through uh, line by line and get the data uh, from the file and bring it into our image contents list. Here if we're, we're saving the EEPROM contents to a file, here again Depends on whether the file name already exists or not, um, but either way, um, we wind up opening a, a, a file for writing um, as a CSV file, and then we go through the uh, line by line and, and write, build up a, a, an actual line of comma separated values and then write that row to the to the uh, file
here we, we've we've got an image in uh, in memory, and we're telling it that we want to write this to the to the EEPROM. So basically, go through the addresses and uh, write at that address the the data from the uh, from the image, and then reread the EEPROM. Uh, to update our EEPROM contents list. Uh, here we can just view whatever is currently in the image contents list. It'll print it out for us in case we want to double check it. And here we can compare the uh, image contents and the EEPROM contents. If they're equal, then you know they match and the compare passes. Otherwise, uh, it, it'll fail. Or if you you have not read any EEPROM data into the to the list or or an image, um, then it'll it'll tell you to either to read or load one of those. Uh, user verified function. That's just to uh, to verify you're sure that the next step that you want to you know do before before you do it. And then here's the actual main loop where it prints out um, the commands, the shortcuts to the commands, and then gets your um, user input, and then acts, you know, carries out that that step. And that's about it. After you know, after you've select quit, it goes ahead and cleans up and ends the program. So let's give the software a run and try it out. So the first thing we get is a, a command prompt and as it says we can type H or help for command help if needed so Let's do that. So we could try some things just to... We don't have a current memory image, but let's try and view something. And of course it gives us an error. It says the current image is empty. So let's try and read the EEPROM. So it gives us a note saying that it's going to... may take a while. And here comes the, the data. It prints it all out for us. So we can see that there's, if we scroll back up to the top, we can see the, the address, and we can see the data, and this is all erased. It's all 255s, it's all ones. Every byte has got all ones in it, so it's all 255s. Um, first eight bytes of data here, second column, eight bytes of data there, then we come down to, you know, address 16 through 31 and so on, all the way down through the to the bottom of the list. We can uh, we can type H without so many spaces. We can type H and uh, get our help back. We can uh, load data from file to memory image. And it says that, that this will overwrite any currently loaded image, which we don't have any right now, so we're sure. And we'll type uh, example dot. I named it dot text, but it's probably a better to name it like a dat file, dat or something like that. I'm not sure. And it says that 64 bytes of data were from the file. So then we can view it. So we're viewing the current memory image, and we can see that it sure enough it has a list of values, and it's just that file I wrote just every memory location had the value of the memory location. So address 63 has the value of 63. Address 2 has the value of 2. But we can also uh, we can compare. We know that the the memory image is, is only got the 64 bytes of data in it where the EEPROM's got you know 2048 bytes of all you know 255. So it says that it found the image data that was loaded. It 
had the EEPROM data that was read before, but it failed because obviously the data doesn't match. So let's write to the EEPROM for sure. Now we've just written that memory image to the EEPROM. Now we only had 64 bytes of data, so only the first 64 bytes overwrote anything in the EEPROM, and the rest of it is still 255s. So even even now, if we compare, the data is going to fail because we still only have 64 bytes of image data and 2,048 bytes of, in the, on the EEPROM. So we could we could save the contents to a file. Um, we'll call this test one for a file name. And now we could load image from the file. Yes, we're gonna we're gonna load that test one from the file back into our memory image and right now it says 2048 bytes of data came in from that file so we could view it and it looks very familiar to our EEPROM contents so if we compare this time it passed because we actually read from the EEPROM its contents were then written out to a file. That file was then reloaded to the memory image and then we compared them so they should be equal. Now we can actually let's get the help up here again. Now we could actually erase the EEPROM and it'll ask us again if we're sure. Yes. So now it says it's erasing it to please wait. Now it's going to read it back just so it makes sure that the EEPROM contents list equals what's actually the contents of the of the chip. And now we can see that all the data, especially the first 64 bytes, are all 255s. And then if we view, remember our our um, image loaded in still has the other data with the with the zero through a sixty-three and the first sixty-four bytes of address memory there. So now if we compare they're not going to be equal again. They don't match. And we can print out our help and then if we want to say we're done we can just select quit and it cleans up and it ends the program and that's it.